everyone, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Sean here, and today we're going to talk about a do-it-yourself archery target. I'm going to go through the materials needed and the cost, as well as some of the tools that you need. And I'll try and give tips and pointers as I go through it um, on other tools you can use if you don't have certain ones that I have, things like that to try and make it a little bit easier for you to build. Um, so I, I'm in my garage today, and this video is probably going to be filmed over a couple days because the weather's supposed to be bad this weekend. Uh, so I'm going to have to move in and out of the garage as I do some of this work. Um, but so kind of the reason I wanted to, to build my own target is one cost. Um, you know, the, the nice bigger targets these days are in the couple hundreds of dollars. Um, and the other one is size. You know, I think a lot of the targets out there are 18, 20, 24 inches. And when you're first starting out in archery, you're not that good and you have stray arrows. You know, I, I have quite a few holes on my, the side of my garage and in my fence um, from missing the target just because you know, I'm, I'm a beginner. I, I'm getting used to my form and trying to learn things. Um, and so I'm going to build a 36 by 36 target and it's going to be about 12 to 16 inches deep. Um, I'm going for something a little, little bit more lightweight, and I'll give some suggestions on how to make it heavier duty if you want to do that, or even to make it lighter. Um, and then I want it to be somewhat mobile as well, because in Houston it rains quite a bit, like it's going to this weekend. Um, and with the stuffing and, and the carpet and some of the stuff that I'm using, uh, it can get wet and moldy and start to smell, or the wood could even deteriorate because I didn't buy uh, treated lumber because um, I knew I was going to be wanting to move it in and out uh, of the, the garage and stuff like that. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and look at the materials. I've got us uh, zoomed in here a little bit on some of the items I've kind of all put here. Um, so I've got a piece of plywood. Um, it's half inch OSB plywood. I just went to Home Depot and grabbed the cheapest half inch piece I could find. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly half inch, it can be a little bit or a little bit less. Depends how heavy and how sturdy you want your project to be. Um, I have four two by two by eight pieces of wood here at the bottom. Um, you can use two by fours. I've seen people use one by twos. It just kind of depends how sturdy and heavy, again, you want your target to be. Um, I figured two by two is kind of a good in between, and so we'll see how that turns out. Um, and then I went ahead and bought new screws for this. Um, one of the reasons I did that is because I think uh, people always do these videos and say, oh, this was a $10 target and they had 90% of the items on hand. Um, I don't think that's realistic. So I wanted to kind of give you a full cost and then it can get cheaper from there. Um, and then, so I have two and a half inch screws and then I have one and a quarter inch screws. Um, and as I start using those, I'll make sure I call them out where I'm using them. Uh, and, and just on the screws, I like to use the star bit, the T25. Um, I think it's got better grip with your drill bit, and they are easier to put in and take out than a Phillips. You don't have to, just a suggestion that I found in, in doing some woodwork. Um, and then I've got some wood glue. I did have that on hand. Uh, if, if you need to get that, it's only about 5 bucks or so at Home Depot. Um, and then I went ahead and bought some casters, some wheels. Um, those are three inch casters, they're pretty basic, and it's kind of an optional item if you're just going to be leaving it outside or you're going to you know, have somebody to help you pick it up and move it, you can do that. But I wanted to make it a little bit more mobile, something I could bring in and out myself, um, so I, I ended up doing some casters. So as far as the tools you'll need, um, I've got a tape measure here. Uh, I have a carpenter square. You can use a speed square. You can use something else that you know is square. You don't have to go out and buy one. Um, I've got a carpenter's knife to be able to cut my material for the front and back. Um, and then I have a drill with the drill bit. If you buy screws, though, it has a small drill bit that comes with it. It's not the easiest to work with, but it's something you don't have to pay for if you don't want to. Um, I've got a pencil there to measure and make my marks. And then obviously I've got my hearing protection and my safety glasses. I highly recommend wearing them. There's no reason for yourself for you to get hurt. Um, and so one thing that you don't see here is the stuffing. I plan on using old clothes, and I'll go into that a little bit later. Um, and then you can actually kind of see it at the bottom. It's the I have a rug 
Um, that's going to be the front and back material. I found this rug on the street a couple of days ago that somebody was throwing out, and so I just went ahead and grabbed it because I thought it would be good for this project. Um, you can use a tarp. You can use burlap. Um, and there's a lot of items you can use. You can put cardboard there. You can use grain bags. So I've seen a lot of different options out there. Um, the one that I've seen work best has actually been carpet, and, and so I think a rug is as close as I can get to that. So that's what I'm going to use. I think it helps with being able to pull out the arrows a little bit easier as well. Um, and then you'll need a saw of some sort. I have over here a miter saw um, that's on a stand. That's what I'll be using to cut my two by twos. And then I also have a table saw that I'll use to cut the plywood. Um, if you have a circular saw, you know, that, that'll work just fine for both the plywood and the two by twos. Um, if you don't have a saw available, you know, when you go to Home Depot to buy the plywood, you can have them cut the plywood to the size that you want it. Um, I, I believe they'll probably do the two by twos for you as well. Uh, if you don't want to go that route and you have a friend that has some of the equipment, I recommend just calling him up and seeing if he'll cut these pieces for you and then you can go back and assemble it yourself. Um, so let's go ahead and get started building this. So we're going to go ahead and cut some of the 2x2s. Two two uh, those are going to be 36 inches long with 45 degree cuts. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Like I said before, make sure you have your safety glasses on, your hearing protection in. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first cut here, like I said, 36 inches from the top to the top of the angles with both your, both your angles facing in. So what I like to do is I like to cut one and I use this as my template or my sample. So I'll take my pencil and I'll just put an S on it as a sample. Alright, so I just finished cutting all of the 36 inch pieces, so this is what it looks like. When you're done, you should have eight of them. So, you'll have leftover pieces from each eight foot piece. Um, I had planned on making it about 16 inches deep, however, based on kind of what I have left over, um, it's going to have to be a little bit shorter. So each of these is close to about 23 inches of usable space, which I don't consider anything of this usable, so I have to make a cut right here to square it off, and I've got about 23 inches on all of my four leftover pieces. So what I'm going to do for the bracing is I'm going to cut these to 11 and a half uh, inches, and so what you'll end up getting in the depth of this, um, because these are actually, even though they're two by twos, they're one and a half inch by one and a half inch. Um, so the depth will end up being the 11 and a half plus the one and a half of the frame on each side, which is three inches. So you'll end up having about a 14 inch deep target. Um, if you want to go deeper, obviously you may have to buy another piece of wood um, to be able to get you know, the bracing that you need to, to go a little bit deeper. You can go shorter if you want, up to you on that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting these cross braces to be able to build the frame for this. All right, so I cut one 11 and a half inch piece here and so this will end up being my sample, and I'm going to use that for the rest of the pieces. Alright, as you can see here, we've got our eight 36 inch pieces, and then we have eight 11 and a half inch pieces for the cross bracing. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the building process. All right, now that we got everything cut, we're gonna start assembling the first frame. So I've got my carpenter square. I like to use glue. Uh, typically, you can use screws on this, but I'm actually gonna end up using a two and a half inch uh, finishing nail with glue and that should hold pretty strong. All 
All right, so we'll start doing the next frame here, following the same process. All right, now I got both frames built, we'll start looking at doing the cross bracing. Um, I had some scrap 2x4s, and because I'm putting casters on here, I wanted the bottom to be a little bit more reinforced, so I ended up cutting two 2x4s two to go out as the bottom here, um, just to give a little bit more reinforcement and give us maybe more room to screw in those uh, wheels on it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start attaching the cross bracing using glue, and I think I'm still gonna use the, the nail gun here. Glue, glue and this nail gun tend to hold up pretty well. Um, again, you can do this using screws as well. So I put a nail, toe nailed into it just to kind of hold it in place. Now I'll come in at this angle. Alright, so for now I'm just going to do the four corners. Um, I've got an extra brace or two I can put in here uh, to help sturdy it up and also to, to where I'm going to put my handles. So I'll go ahead and put the top one on now. All right, so now that we got the frame built, I may put another cross brace or two in uh, up on the top once we get it filled. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting the OSB with the table saw. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, I didn't cut it before to the length because obviously I ended up having to change the cross braces and things like that. So I'm gonna measure this. So it looks like it's going to be a little bit longer than uh, 36. And then we have about 14 and a half. So it started raining yesterday before I could cut the plywood. Um, so I'm back at it today. Um, it's in the morning and it's supposed to rain some more again, but hopefully we can get this knocked out today. Um, but so I started setting up the table saw and I was going to get ready to cut uh, my pieces to go on the top and the sides of this. Um, and realized that it, it really wasn't going to work that well, so I, I think I'm going to use the circular saw and just cut it with that instead. You know, you don't need a perfectly precise cut for this. Um, so that, that's my plan and, and so I'll start taking my measurements again and go ahead and get set up and cut. Alright, so I got my four side pieces cut, so it should be good. By the way, this is just a little reflective piece. It was the cheapest plywood they had, so I got it. It doesn't really mean anything. I'm actually going to put that side in, so that if I wanted to paint it or something, I could put it on this side. So I'm going to start installing these. So for these, I'm going to install using the one and a quarter inch. Uh, one and a half inch would work just as well. So I'm not going to start with the top. That's where I'm going to put all the filling in. Alright, so one thing I uh, wanted to do also is I was going to put a handle on the opposite side of where the wheels are going to be so that I can kind of lift up from there. Um, so remember we put that cross bracing in back behind here. So I'm going to install this handle. I'll put a link for it as well 
um, and I'll add it to the price list um, as an optional price. You don't have to do this if you're not going to be moving uh, the target very much. Alright, so now we're going to start installing the carpet over the top. Um, you can use your one and a quarter inch screws here, or I've got a, a little staple gun with my air compressor that I'm going to use. Um, I think that may be a little bit easier. And so I'll start in one corner and start stretching it, you know, to the sides, and you want it to be very tight. So now I'm going to go around, and, and I don't have a torch lighter, I just have a little cigar lighter here. I'm going to fringe the edges so that it doesn't keep fraying. So, like I said, this is an optional thing you can do. Um, I took a little 4x4, four four. I had it as scrap. You can use a couple 2x2s, two 2x4s, two two however you want to do it. Um, and then obviously the casters. Um, and so the reason I'm doing this, A, it, it brings the thing, the target off the ground a little bit um, so that it doesn't get wet and start rotting the plywood on the bottom. And B, it keeps it level uh, with the wheels. So these are about three inch casters, plus you've got this one inch space here, get you to your four inches. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and install these. Alright, so it's time to fill the target. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit of kind of my thought process on this. So, I ended up going with kind of old clothes, rags, sweatshirts, things like that. Um, I watched quite a few of these videos and did a lot of research online. And I thought this was kind of the best option for being able to pull your arrow as well as stopping power. Um, I, I think there's a lot of options you can do here. You know, I, I've seen plastic, I've seen cardboard, I've seen carpet even. Um, but this is something that I thought it was easier to access than any of those items. Um, but, you know, again, if you're wanting to leave yours outside and it may rain, you may not want to do the carpet covering, and you may not want to do clothes because obviously it's going to start getting wet and smelly and, and moldy, and, and that's something you don't really want to deal with. Um, so if you're wanting to leave it outside, I recommend using, like, plastic, um, you know, grocery bags, uh, the plastic wrap that goes around the pallets at like Home Depot or Lowe's, um, and you can grab some of that stuff. Um, otherwise, I recommend the clothes. Uh, one thing you don't want to put in here as far as clothes to go is denim, so no jeans, no like Carhartt type of material. It's just it makes it really hard to pull an arrow out. Um, so I, I would avoid those. And then you know zippers and buttons. You know you you can put them in there, but I would tend to keep those either at the bottom or at the top and. Uh, I also would recommend you know, maybe even pulling off or cutting off the zipper or the button if you want to do that. Um, just an option. And so we'll start stuffing this. All 
All right, so we're outside now. I've got my bow, my arrows, and then my targets down there. Uh, I've ranged it at about 18 yards. I wanted to make sure I had a backstop when I first took my first shot with it just in case. Um, and then after that, I'll start setting it up at 20 and 30 just to test it out there as well. Uh, so again, my uh, Diamond Infinite Edge Pro bow here, it's, it's set to about 58 pounds right now. Um, my arrows are uh, high FOC, so they're actually around 585 uh, grains, just to give you an idea of what it does to the target. So as you can see, it stops it pretty well. Um, you will try pulling them out and see how easy it is to pull them out. Uh, I decided to come back inside to kind of give you some thoughts in, in my follow-up and, and finish this video out. Um, it's pretty hot and humid outside, so I didn't want to go out there and finish it. And it looked like a, a storm's coming in right now, so we're, we're supposed to get rain all weekend here. Um, and so I wrote down some items that as I was building it, you know, I was thinking about. And after taking some shots, I had some thoughts on. Um, so when I first bought the 2 by 2s I really thought they weren't going to be sturdy enough. I almost put them back and got some 2 by 4s um, but after building it and getting the plywood on there and getting everything in it, I don't have any issues with how sturdy it is. It, it seems like it's going to hold up pretty well. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it holds up over a couple months, a year, and, and, and I can do some follow-up on that. But I think the 2 by 2s are good. Um, it is pretty heavy. You know, I, I think you could potentially go to the one by 2s and, and still be pretty sturdy, especially if you keep the half-inch plywood on there. Um, so if any of y'all try this out and end up using one by twos, let me know how it works. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I'll probably end up building another one out for the property. Um, so another thing, the handle I put onto it, you know, moving it around, you know, it, my knuckles were rubbing up against the plywood. Um, so I may look into another option, whether it's a rope or maybe I space those out or tighten them up a little bit so my hand doesn't rub up against it. Um, or I may, you know, put on a piece of wood or some, something to give me a little bit better of a handle on it. Uh, and, and I can give you an update on that and a follow-up as well. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm thinking about doing an add-on, uh, a paper tuning target on, on it and having some, you know, one by twos or, or two by twos come out the sides of it. Um, and then have some poles that go up and down and be able to put a butcher paper on one of the poles and, and pull it across, something like that. Uh, that gives me the option to paper tune into the same exact target. Um, and so I may do that. If I do that, I'll do a video on it and, and do a review of how that works out. Um, so then my last concern I had, let me see if I can grab an arrow here, um, was the paint. And uh, I probably should just let it dry. And I don't know if you all can see that or not, but there's quite a bit of red paint on that. Um, on the, the shaft and as well as my point, uh, you know, I think rubbing alcohol will take it off. So I'm not too worried about it, but it just was a little bit of concern. Um, I'm, I'm hoping maybe tomorrow or, or, you know, next week, once it all dries and it, it cures up pretty good that I don't have that issue. Um, and then my last issue or concern is the carpet. I thought the carpet or the rug would work really well. Um, but I have a few concerns on, you know, the ease of pulling it out. You know, some of the arrows are easy to get in and out. And maybe after shooting a little bit, it'll, it'll definitely become easier. Um, my other concern is, you know, if I'm putting 50 shots a day in that in a month, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to have to almost replace the carpet or move my targets or something like that. Um, but again, I have both sides. So maybe it won't be that bad to, to flip it around or something like that. Um, so I'll let you all know. 
Um, so I plan on doing a follow-up review in about a month or so. You know, I'll go through some of these concerns, anything that popped up. Um, if there was another concern, anything I, I really like about it, anything I do differently. Um, again, you know, for the price, I think it's, I already think it's worth it. You know, it's not that expensive. You know, you, you, you can add on items like I did with the casters and, and the handle. And, you, you know, if I do the paper tuning and, and you start doing that and, and your price is going to add up. Um, but, you know, you, you can customize it to how you want it and how you want to look. You know, I, I can paint the whole thing. I can, you know, make it look a lot nicer if I wanted to. But for something that you're just putting in the backyard and taking shots at, you don't really need to go all out on it, in my opinion. Um, so just kind of let me know y'all's thoughts. And if you liked this video and are interested in, in my follow-up review, uh, please subscribe. And I appreciate y'all watching. Thanks.